Hey, Nathan, guess what? We just bought the world's coolest, or is it kookiest, classic convertible. And we bought, yep, a Saab 900 Turbo. From our youth, dude, this is a 92. Our youth, well, a 92. Okay. All right, maybe. So you are, you are like finishing your grad school well, keep, keep it, getting out of high school. <laughs> keep in mind, they built these things for like 17 years. Oh yeah, a long time and they barely changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and I've been looking for one for a very long time. And the weird thing is the a 900 Turbo, this is the 16 valve, right. has become kind of the hipster vehicle and they're really hard to find. Uh, so they uh, run about three to $5,000 if you can find one. Right. Because they all have like 200,000 miles because they were driven a lot. So when this one popped up the other day on Craigslist, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, right? I wanted the coupe with a manual, uh -huh. but instead I got a convertible with an automatic. Well, you know, life isn't perfect, but here's the good news. It's still a convertible, yep. which is cool because you have hair and you can appreciate it. <laughs> but more importantly, I mean, for the dough that you paid for this thing, it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's a one, literally a one owner car. A little old lady owned it, bought it in Minnesota, where else? Of course. I drove it to Florida, then back here to Colorado. Uh, and then I paid 2,500 for it with 118,000 miles. Uh, so why don't you give them a little walk around and show them what makes this so kooky? Because under the hood is really kooky. Yeah, we'll get to under the hood in just a minute because it's just opening the hood is an experience. This car is front wheel drive with an engine that's reversed. Once again, we'll show you when we pop the hood. I actually have a little tiny bit of a history with these because uh, a cousin, same name as mine basically, uh, had one of these when he was in law school. And I remember him, you know, cruising around and I was wondering, what the hell is that? And it was in California, exactly where you want a convertible. The thing about it that always got to me was the fact that, boom, it has this, a really comfortable interior, especially for big people. <laughs> I'm not small and I fit very well in the front and you know believe it or not it has half decent space in the back now at the time this was going up against vehicles like the Chrysler TC if you remember that menagerie of almost a Chrysler and almost a Maserati but if you hey, come BMW, back dude. Huh? Oh, I'm BMW. Hey, BMW. people yeah. would actually you know cross shop this with the BMW because there was a lot of power under the hood and there was a lot of technology in this car. And yeah. It, and of course Volvo, right? I mean, Saab and Volvo fought each other tooth and nail in Sweden. Yeah, but in terms of convertibles uh, that are front wheel drive, yeah. now rear drive, of course, the BMW, and there were some other products out there, including stuff from Cadillac, but this car was really unique. And what's really funny is that I've heard stories that certain types of people really like this car and gravitate to this car and it turns out that it's true like engineers college professors i had a buddy i have a buddy who's a college professor here at cu he drives nothing that's why i bought it because uh he used to drive me around in his uh -huh. and i fell in love with the uh, saab because that's all he drove and of course accounts yeah and, and attorneys too it turns out once again my cousin but i've known other people in california who have owned these things and many of them We'll go to another one after they blow it up or whatever after 200 300 miles and then they'll get another one and that is also part of this whole sob tradition which is just insane so, so before you go into the hood let me show you what's wrong with it okay yeah please uh, because it's 2500 dollars. i mean it runs and drives uh and hopefully passes emissions but there are some issues so first of all they did rust this one had a little bit of a um I think a stint that was repaired right there, but that's the only part I can actually find that has rust. And if you look below it, the tires are pretty shot. Uh, so, so you know, a little bit of uh, rust repair maybe, and bad tires. But that's not, geez, baby. that's not the sc scary part. The scary part is uh, right here. If you look at the steering column, it looks normal, right? But look at that. <laughs> There's something here that is not right because this is, should. I mean, that shouldn't be moving like that. Plus you'll note that Sobs are very safe and this one actually has something that's very unique one airbag yeah and over here right there show me in one heated seat well that is all part of the swedish tradition first of all that loose steering wheel is to massage your wrist as you're driving <laughs> the swedes like having you know nice loose wrists and one heated seat who needs heated seats that's just redundant probably right? the, probably the coolest thing about sobs of course is that they were an uh, aircraft company right they yeah. built fighter jets and so if you look at the cockpit everything is designed in a way to orient toward the driver. So the stuff that you use the most, like the radio, uh, that is of course up high. And then the stuff that you use the least is farther down. And the most infamous or famous part of a Saab is right there. It's where the key is. Uh, it's always in the center console. Um, 
that's just a Saab thing, you know, like the Porsches up here on the left, that's there. Uh, and that's because this is supposed to be a cockpit. If you look at the way that the windshield is wrapped around the car, it's gotta be one of the most curved windshields of any car you can buy, right? Uh, back in the day, definitely. And here's the cool part about this car in terms of overall view. When you're sitting in this car and driving it, even with the top up, outward view is quite good, especially for a convertible. All right, let me pop the hood and you show them what makes this so unique. All right, even the way the hood opens, right? So let me pop it here. There you go. Hey, you think I'm gonna go over here and pop it up, right? No, no, go for it, Roman. Cause that won't, that, that won't work. I think, I think there's something you gotta hit over there before we can do it. I think you, yeah, there you go. No? No, I thought you, I thought you just went up back here. No, nope, I think there's something here. There's gotta be something, right? Well, how does it open? All right, see, this is the thing about getting a car. There we go. That's Aha. how, see, it's so unique, we couldn't even do it. I haven't opened one of these in about 30 years. Like an old BMW, right, clamshell? Yeah, but <laughs> different in certain ways. First of all, this engine is backwards. That's right. Um, all the belts are back here. One of the problems with Saabs for a lot of owners who buy a used one is they have to go to a specialist in order to have them serviced because a lot of the components here are unique. They're bespoke. They are just Saab. This is a uh, six-cylinder that puts no, out... it's a four-cylinder. I'm sorry. It's a four-cylinder turbo, Nathan. It's the four-cylinder turbo that, that puts, puts out 160 horsepower, horsepower right? and like 180 pound-foot of torque. Now, the weird thing is it's not only backwards, but it's also slanted at a 45-degree angle. And when you think about what a front-wheel drive car is, right, usually the engine is mounted traversely. Right. This one is mounted backwards, slanted, and longitudinally, right. which is crazy uh, because because then you have to have a, a, a gear set, right, that actually powers the front wheels underneath the engine. Right, and it, it, it's kind of offsetting if you look at what a regular front wheel drive is. It's actually starting over here and then goes down there. The other thing is that it is a turbocharged engine, and it has a fairly good-sized turbo. But Made by Mitsubishi. Yep, there is a problem with that. Um, it's a big turbo, and big turbos take a lot of pressure to spool up, right? So that takes time. And one thing about Saabs, especially these, is that they're known for turbo lag. Am I right? Um, Come on. Uh, I would think turbo lag is generous. Uh, you know, <laughs> you, you could probably like... A dead spot in the universe. You, could, you, pro the you could probably like, you know, open up uh, one of those... Uh, Gas station sandwiches, take a bite <laughs> before the... as, as the power's building. <laughs> and then the thing all, all of a sudden comes on. There's a good two or three second uh, lag with, yeah, with yeah, these. But, but once it hits, it's very powerful. Now this, of course, has the automatic, which is a shame. I'd love to have a manual, but it's a three-speed automatic. And you know, uh, for a coupe, I think you'd want the manual because it's more of a performance. I mean, yeah. this, is a, this is a cruiser, right? Convertibles are always cruisers. So uh, I'm not too upset by the fact that uh, it has, um, you know, a th three-speed automatic if it's a convertible now there are other things wrong with it uh it leaks like a sieve okay so it's dripping oil from somewhere we have to get that fixed and if you were to put the top up you would notice that the rear window which is actually glass is not attached anymore unfortunately it's attached at the top but not at the bottom and a little bit of uh you know tape will fix that which reminds me there's some tape that's been used as uh some uh filler on the front end too oh yeah right here there's been a little bit of a it's had a little bit of a stint uh, and somebody's used duct tape to, 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 to fix it. The other bad thing about it is, uh, um, well, it's kind of boring. It's white, you know, I mean, I would, I would rather have a color that pops, but they all tend to be like black. One of the problem dashboard, as you can see, is very cracked. Uh, these things are sought after without a cracked dashboard. But get this, Nathan, <laughs> this vehicle has had a new alternator, as yeah. you can tell right there. Uh, the owner said that they spent $700 on that, which seems like a lot, but there's a new alternator. And it's got an intercooler. So it's turbocharged and, and intercooled. intercooled. How cool is that for a car that's now, what, 92? What is that, 30, 40 years old, something like that? I'm really bad at math. Uh, it's over 35 years old. So there's a lot to love about Saabs, and the fact is, is that they have a really unique suspension setup. They drive differently than any other car that's out there. I really did admire them. I thought they were just really unusual and being unusual is cool. And I think perhaps that's why a lot of hipsters are buying these now because 
you don't see them as often as you used to. Yeah, they built about, um, in, I think it's like 16 or 17 years, they built the 900, and, and this is considered the 900 Turbo Classic, right? Because they also built the 9000 toward the end of this run at the same time, which is a more modern car. Yeah. So they built just under a million of these, and about 50,000 of them were convertibles. Uh, so, you know, there's not a lot of these convertibles out there, and I would think probably out of those 50,000, there aren't that many that are still on the road. Having said that, these things, I was looking at them, they all have like 200,000 miles. So to find one with 118,000 miles, with no rips in the upholstery, uh, with, you know, everything that works, air conditioning doesn't work, but I've pretty much given up on buying a used 30-year-old car with functioning air conditioning. It's, got, it's a convertible for exactly. crying out loud. What do you need an air conditioner for? Come on. Exactly. So uh, this has just been a quick walk around uh, and uh, over at TFL Classics, and we'll do a link to that channel below, Tommy's going to do a complete and deep dive into the quirkiness of this because there's a lot more quirky stuff that we haven't even gotten to uh, in this just quick walk around. So what do you think? $2,500? Good? Bad? Nathan, good? Bad? Oh, I think that's a great price, especially if we don't have to put much money into it after this, which unfortunately well, we will. Yeah, we will. I, I figure this is a $5,000 car and we're going to put at least $2,500. So there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? Let's take parts off the Mini and put it on here. <laughs> oh, that would rock. <laughs> Tommy's Mini specifically. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's even got a spoiler, Nathan. Yeah, I, actually. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's functional. Oh, it, of course it is. And, and here's the cool part. Uh, if you get the hardtop version of this, yep. uh, it has like a really noticeable spoiler. And I'm pretty sure that they are functional. The thing about Saab was they weren't screwing around when they built these things. So they actually did wind tunnel testing. They actually did real world road testing. And these things for the time were some of the safest cars out there. Yeah, and then if you guys aren't familiar with Saab, of course, they were purchased uh, by GM. Yeah, that didn't go well. Yeah, that didn't go well. Yeah. Uh, and then they were gm affied. Is that fair to say? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then eventually GM uh, uh, folded the brand, unfortunately. Do you know I had but a this car was, that this had was a... Swedish. This was... this was properly <laughs> Swedish. Swedish. Yeah. Do you know I had a car that had uh, Saab components in it, but wasn't a Saab? What was that? It was a Saturn. Really? Yeah. The Saturn W uh, the little wagon they yeah. had, which was the larger version of yeah. it. I actually had one with a four-cylinder engine, and that four-cylinder actually was used in Saab vehicles as well. And it was actually a half-decent engine. It was just a temporary car, but it was Saab-ish. You know, let me show you one more thing before we close this video. You know, Swedish engineers are serious, and I wish that, like, Toyota would learn from them. Because, because check this out, Nathan. Look at the air intake, right? See that air intake on yeah. the hood? That, that's that's functional. I mean, you can see where it lines up, right? And then it lines up right... right by just like the Tundra. Oh, wait, the Tundra doesn't... Right where you're there. Right? It actually lines up with that hole. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what that's what air intake should be, right? They shouldn't be just decorative. They should actually do something. I absolutely agree. All right. I, really, I, I like this. I, I like the cars that we get that aren't crazy expensive, and more importantly, are something that just nobody else really has. Yeah, you know, we always liked it. Last year we had a uh, old classic three series convertible. This year we're going to have the Saab for the summer. So we always like to get some kind of a cool old uh, vehicle for the summer. And then if you like this car. At the end of the summer, once we're done filming it with it, we'll be selling it. Uh, so let us know in the comments below or send us an in email at info at tflcar.com. We'll put you in line and if you want to buy it, we'll sell it because we'll pass it on to somebody else. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. All right. See you guys next time. Ciao. Take care.